Andaman Petjinda. He's from Surin. 21 years old, stands at 165 centimeters, has 53 fights, 35 wins, five draws, and 13 losses. His last three fights here at Max was a points loss against Extra Cha Sampinong, a second round KO loss against Boon Mak Pet Asira, and his last fight a points loss against Sai Chantanay. He trains and fights out of Saw Klin Mi, where he's trained by Piri Chai Planchak Planchok, and managed by Boon Som Klin Mi. His opponent in the red corner, Gai Chon Natawat Go Away. He has 84 fights, 61 wins, two draws, and 21 losses. This is his first fight here at Max, and he trains and fights out of Natawat Go Away Gym. The yeah, first thing you notice uh, looking at him on is uh, he's a walking canvas. Uh, you gotta wonder if he'll paint a masterpiece tonight. Definitely has the experience here at Max to do so. Guy Chon gonna have to prove himself. Guy Chon definitely the uh, shorter stockier of, of the two. Kinda gotta wonder what kind of strategy he'll employ as well as we've seen in the last fight, uh, difference in height. Just get to witness the uh, traditional Y crew here from both fighters. It's one of those dances you'll see before each and every Muay Thai fight. And I heard in the olden days uh, they could tell where a fighter was from and who his teacher was uh, just according to how his uh, Y crew looked. Yeah, you got to imagine over the years there's so many gyms now it's, it's so hard to tell where fighters are from. You're kind of imagining sort of just blended all together now. I think back to the the beautiful uh, white crew of uh, Nam Sok Noi. Uh -huh. yeah, it's just one of those, uh, I guess, paradoxes of Muay Thai. You got the, the beauty of the Y crew, and then just the brutality of the fight, which follows. Again, and then after the brutality, you have the great show of respect from both fighters. It's, it's uh, a beautiful sport. Yeah, nothing left inside the ring. Or I should say, everything left inside the ring. You're not going to find a lot of bad blood between the gyms here. And they fight each other so often. See Andaman there climbing up on the top rope. This is a new one. I've, I've seen a lot of white crews in my day, but never uh, this one right here. It's very, uh, very interesting to watch. Good for the fans to get a, a, a taste of uh, Thai culture, getting to see uh, this wide crew. Beautiful to watch. Also, the wire crew gives the fighters a chance to um, relax and kind of settle in, you know, get rid of some of that nervous energy as well as to stretch your uh, limber your body out a little bit. So it serves multiple purposes aside from the traditional um, origins of, of, of the wire crew. Yeah, a lot of times in the West, we, you see the fighters warming up backstage, hitting pads and moving around, but very rarely are you going to see that here. Like you said, they, they use the wire crew really to warm up. A very, very good point. Yeah, you don't see the fighters backstage uh, hitting pads and doing the other so-called things you would see. We'll just wait for both fighters now to have the traditional Mong Kongs removed. Another part of the Muay Thai gear. You see the final blessing there from each of their corners. 
where we start our first opening round of this fourth fight here at Max Muay Thai. Been a great night of action thus far. Looking forward to this fight as well and the final fight. And so far, no fights making it past the second round just yet. Still got two more fights left though. Got shown there, just testing the reflexes and reaction of Andaman. Very composed and slow start for the red corner. Yeah, good feel out from both fighters. Good catch and then body shot from Andaman. Trying to soften up that body there, got shown early on. And, and that's one thing you'll see when you see a fighter put like Guy Chong, you'll tend to want to attack the body, but uh, looks can be very deceiving. And so how do these ties are built like that and have a midsection of, of steel? Like one of the pad holders, uh, Eminent Air, I used to train with, Palak. He looked like a heavy guy, but when you teeped him or you hit him in the stomach, it was, it was like a coconut shell under there. Slowly inching forward, a bit more aggressive. Just throwing up that high kick there, trying to see what happens. Good Feeds elbow. Feeds that elbow through. Guy Chone might be hurt. He's in the shell there, and the referee is going to give him a standing eight. That right elbow sneaking right through the guard there, just kind of offsetting him. You gotta wonder if that amount is going to go right back to it. These guys are so smart. Also got a one of Guy Chun doing a good job of trying to recover. Just getting knocked back there after that knee. Again, feeding that left elbow through, but Guy Chun now starting to open up. Coming right back. Oh, the right elbow drops him, and the referee's going to call it off. So another first round knockout victory here for Andaman Petjinda. Guy Chun, though, back to his feet. Andaman going to go over and respects to his opponent and that's always great to see one thing about that a lot of people missing uh watching the top fights here in thailand is the amount of respect the fighters show for each other i'll see that again one more time on the replay there's that first left elbow snuck it right through the guard there catching him right on the chin with that right kick as well Pulled the hand down and slipped it right through. Beautiful technique. Right in this exchange here, we just finished off with that final right elbow, rising right through the guard there. Sending Guy Chone down for the second and final time. Go to the ring announcer for the official decision. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by way of technical knockout, Blue China, Andaman Petchenda. All right, we'll be right back the short break. Next fight, our main event tonight, Thailand takes on Uzbekistan. This is Muay Thai Fight Time. 